There are several reasons why end of life is an important part of life cycle engineering and sustainability. First, we want to move from a linear economy to a circular economy. That means we want to close material flows. We want to use materials and products again. And one motivation is there's a huge potential in using secondary materials because secondary materials very often have a much lower environmental impact compared to primary materials. So that means the embodied energy in secondary materials is much lower than the embodied energy in primary materials. Other motivation is, of course, we want to have a controlled circular economy. So we want to control material flows and um, we want not that our materials and products end up in landfills or even worse, end up in countries with lower environmental standards and cause an uh, environmental impact or are harmful to the local environment. And of course, another motivation is proper end-of-life systems would allow us to separate potential hazardous materials from valuable materials. So we don't mix hazardous materials with valuable materials. And of course, end-of-life is also a business opportunity and can create jobs. Uh, for example, we can uh, come up with getting spare parts out of uh, used products and use them to repair existing products in the market. Or we can come up with a second life of products uh, and then the product will be much, much cheaper than the product uh, at the first stage. Unfortunately, there are a lot of challenges and barriers, or at least there are some challenges and barriers we have to overcome. So one challenge is if you look into the development of products over the years, then what we see is that more and more we use different materials and we mix them uh, to come up with products. For example, if you look into a very old phone and you compare it to your smartphone, then you will see that the number of materials we are using is, uh, are totally different. And using uh, materials also in a very small amount, uh, besides having a large number, makes it very different in end of life to separate these different materials, or in some cases it's even nearly impossible to separate them again. So this is one of the challenges uh, we have to look at. Um, another uh, challenge is that the place where products are designed, produced uh, and used could be quite different to the place where the product is recycled or at least where the product is produced and the place where the product is used and recycled is very different. Um, and very often we use uh, the products for many years, so there's also a large time span uh, between the creation of a product and use and the end of life. So why is this a challenge? This is a challenge because there's an information gap. So very often people or companies in the business of end of life, they have no or very t limited information about the product. What kind of materials are used in the product? Are there hazardous materials inside the product or valuable materials in the product? So, or what are the best technologies to recycle that material? This information is very often not available today in the end of life stage. So, and of course, the separation of the different materials may require um, a, a suitable um, separation technologies. Um, and uh, very often, this kind of separation today requires manual labor for disassembly, and that means we have high labor cost. Or we use technologies, uh, for example, shredding technologies. But often if you use those technologies, then we are not able to have uh, 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 an output which is the same quality as the primary material. So there are still different materials are mixed and we typically call these uh, downcycling. So now, what are the solutions we can think of? Uh, we can uh, address this challenge from two sides. The first one would be we come from the end of pipe. So that means we develop uh, smarter, better disassembly technologies. Uh, for example, we could think about robots that help us to make an automated assembly or we can use smart algorithms so that the system can even learn how to better dismantle and separate uh, products or we can come up with new separation technologies, 
new shredding technologies that allow us to better separate uh, different kinds of materials from each other. But of course there is another side and that is the begin of pipe. So that means we start already when we design the product and we try to design the product in such a way that it's easy to disassemble and recycle. To do so, this requires a method and tools uh, to support decision making during the design phase uh, and to support a design for disassembly and recycling. And uh, another solution or uh, another part of this bridging the end of pipe and the begin of pipe would be that we also bridge the information gap I talked about in the beginning. So that means we have to think about how we can bring the information from when the product is designed and generated and produced towards the end of life, where the company or the people doing the disassembly and recycling need information about the product so that they can do informed decisions. And here we also can come up with maybe the product has a small storage and takes some of the information about what kind of materials are used inside the product or maybe we think of and platform, a web-based platform where this information can be shared.